Hi everybody, welcome to Gumbo TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hobbling Japan. And we're back in the studio, episode 101. There we are. Episode 100 and the competition was a huge success. Yes, thank you very much yeah. for everyone who said, have a happy baby, Ryan. Have a happy baby. <laughs> I think they said congratulations actually, but yeah. yeah. Happy New Year and congratulations yes. on the baby. Yes. It was a great competition. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. And uh, prizes, Ryan. Are you sending those out? Uh, yes, um, I will have contacted everyone in the competition by the time you see this video. Yep. And hopefully you get back to me and I will send out the prizes to you. Sounds good. Yeah. Awesome prizes. Yeah. Good Someone's stuff. getting a big box, a PG. <laughs> Some people are getting a big box. Uh, today, actually, uh, you know, it's January and we have the new release trickling in after the new year. I got a new release here, this HG kit, mm -hmm. the H Burst, but uh, do you want to show uh, this Zoe's kit that you mentioned in the last episode you're going to be working on? That is on? correct. So I changed my mind. Again. Again. Okay. That way I don't have to build anything. <laughs> Just keep changing my mind. No wonder he wasn't ready by the time we had to film. Uh, yeah, I'm doing the Iron Kong instead of the, what was the other one? The, the Geno Breaker, Breaker Raven mm -hmm. Custom. Yeah. I just think this looks awesome. Yeah, it is good. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll take a quick look inside. So Sid, yeah. I have it. I've changed my mind. Yeah. I'm going to do this guy. Yeah. But you know an interesting it's, fact it's, that I did not know? It's pretty big. How big is it? It's 25 centimeters, Ryan. That's wow. almost 27 centimeters. <laughs> That's huge. And I'm excited because as everyone knows, I like big kits. So, in the big box, you get two smaller boxes. Yeah, I like where this is going. <laughs> but I'm only going to look at one of the boxes. So okay. we'll put this guy aside. I like that they put the artwork on the box as well. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, uh, the production value yeah, exactly. is extraordinary. But let's have a look in here. We have a manual. Well, quite a decent manual. Yeah, it's going to be thick. Um, what do you yeah. think, water slides? Water slides. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about painting this guy, but actually, I, I don't know how I'm going to do that. We'll have to look into it. Yeah. But Everybody uh, yeah. has these big dreams about what they're going to do with their model, and then they have a baby. <laughs> well, that's it. So you can see the pieces are, well, there's a lot. A lot. That's but there cool. are some big oh, geez, chest pieces, size, that thing. which are huge. What else have we got? Uh, again, some more big chest pieces. Mm -hmm. And it looks like over here, there's actually some circular parts. I assume his arms and legs get to move. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm very excited. I, I do apologize for taking so long. But, uh, Life happens. Let me put this back in the box. Okay. That looks like it's going to be a lot of work, Ryan. I well, I looked a bit at the manual. It should yeah. be okay. It's Fine. snap fit. Yeah, snap fit. So it should be, be okay. okay. I'm super excited to get started. Yeah. But Sid, so, do you have something to show uh, us? Yeah, I do. I want to show the newest uh, HG kit that came in. Yes. This is the uh, Age FX Burst version, which we mm -hmm. showed at the uh, Shizuoka Hobby Show, I think it was there. It was. And uh, the Tokyo Toy Show, we showed it as well. And now we have it in our little, greedy little hands, grubby little hands. Uh, Ryan, I want you just to, just to touch the box and tell me what you think. It's very fat. Lumpy. It's lumpy, right? Yeah. Well, a lot of times you get a gun and you touch it and then the box gives and you kind of get an idea of what's inside this one. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's lumpy. There's, chocker, there's some stuff in this box. Chocker full. Yeah, so uh, let's open it up and have a look. Okay, so uh, the Age FX from Gundam Age, of course. This is actually my favorite suit from the, the Gundam Age. Burst mode and normal mode. And uh, you can see uh, it's a different color than the original. Of course, this is the burst mode. It still comes with all the stickers. And uh, this, these pieces are actually quite sizable on this runner. They're what's causing the, the box to, to bend, actually, I've discovered. And you've got all your extra hands on here. Now, the uh, original FX came with lots of effect parts, and these are still here in abundance on the burst. And all these effect parts and the stand on which you can mount them, so they splay out when he's doing his, his burst in. There we go, the weapons. And uh, what do you think of this color, Ryan? Is it a mauve? Is it a purple? Oh, yeah, it's like a... Maybe it's, uh, it's kind of cool, kind of yeah, subdued compared to lavender. the blue and red. Yeah, lavender. lavender. I'll give it to you. And uh, it even comes with a stand, so you can mount the, the Gundam and his uh, burst mode stuff. So if you never picked up the original Age FX, you can uh, always pick up the burst if you prefer the, the darker lavender color, as Ryan pointed out. Nothing like lavender. 
Okay, Ryan, so uh, that concludes the, uh, the latest kit. It's an HG, as we mentioned before. And this episode, we're going to devote to HG. Ryan has asked me to do a little bit of an explanation or maybe kind of an introduction to the that line mate, for anybody who's new and hasn't yeah, seen no, it before. Yeah, I'm very so, interested because uh, for me personally, I don't seem to remember much. Yeah. And um, I'm interested to find out how this all fits together. Okay, well, I got a big pile of HGs down here. If you give me a second, I'll... Uh, Pull them all out of the table. Okay, Sid. Yeah. I have a question okay. about HG. Um, okay. Why is it called HG? It's called HG because it's basically a, a higher standard of, of model. In the uh, 80s, gun kits were uh, glue. And they didn't introduce the snap fit until like in 1988. And then 1990, they put out the, uh, the high grade line and they came with uh, more articulation. They came with poly caps which uh, allowed, of course, them to bend and stand in various poses. And they came with more details in the weapons. And uh, you can see they've come a long way. This is the, uh, the high new here. This is one of my, my favorite HG kits and mobile, mobile suits in general. And uh, when we talk about uh, the polycap, this is what allows you to uh, build all the joints in, in the body so that they, they can bend and articulate. And I'm just gonna pop this open here and actually take this out. Because when they were doing the polycaps, they used to build specific for the kit, and then they standardized standardized them in around 1993. So if you look up here, you just see a PC and a number. So this is PC runner number uh, 132. So a lot of the kits will use uh, will use runner number 132. I've actually got a couple uh, other kits here. The Z Zulu here. You can see it is also the PC runner is also the 132. And if there's any extra articulation or a backpack part or a weapon that also needs to move and articulate, what they'll do is they'll actually just add these on the uh, tail end of the runner. They'll tack these on there so you get those extra polycaps that you need. And uh, what do we got here? This is the, the Jigen Hikos type. You can see it's also PC132. And I, I don't know all the numbers, like there's a 102, 103. I don't know if it goes all the way up. I think there's 113, 114. But uh, if you built enough of these uh, HG kits, you'll start to recognize uh, the Polycap Runner. And in the last year or so, every uh, kit that's come out has had almost the exact same runner, plus a little additions on the side there. So what can you expect from HG? Well, these days, you can expect that they're giving you uh, a lot of uh, the weapons before you maybe get a rifle, a beam saber. Now they're trying to throw in extra stuff. They're trying to throw in the bazookas as well. You always get the foil stickers, but now you can get these marking stickers to go on them. Get the detail on there. And now, uh, the Master Grade line, which is what I primarily focus on, I think they're at like 160 now. There's 160 of those kits have made available, but they didn't start that until 1995. And uh, the HG line, it started earlier, and it's now in the, it's what, two or three hundreds? If you don't count you know, seed or age or double O, I think there's still almost 200 HG seed kits. It's insane. And it's, it's awesome. Yeah. But be, with the standardized polycap runner and the same uh, design element for the use of that runner, they can uh, just pump out kits over and over and over again. And when new anime are coming, you'll tend to see the HG kit out first so all the all the fans can get their hands on it. And that while the people are going over this, this new HG of this new character suit, uh, Bandai is already working on the uh, master grade model version of it and it's kind of a cycle you know you'll get an HG you'll get an MG you'll get an HG of a second version variant or something and it just it just stacks and stacks and stacks of these build up and one thing I like about the HG line is just it's really really inexpensive it's going back to the uh, the high new here in a master grade kit I think it's 7,000 yen it's an expensive kit yeah but uh, this one the retail price for these uh, what Bandai originally asked for is only 2,200 yen. It's like a, a third of the price, less than a third of the price. And you're basically getting the same same suit, but just in a smaller scale. And uh, what, if you want to talk about like what would be more expensive, uh, let's look at the uh, Delta Gundam here. We showed this on the show. The Delta Gundam is famous because it is all blinged up here. It has that special coating. Now Bandai put this out as the uh, HD version. And it wasn't cheap, I mean, it's 4,000 yen. But uh, could you imagine if Bandai put out a Master Ray version <laughs> coated like this? Oh. It would be, you know, similar to what the Titanium Banshee that we've seen last week, 12,000 yen, 10,000 yen. And for the people who don't want to spend that kind of money, but do want this kind of effect in this suit, 
the, the HG line is, is excellent. And now Bandai is putting out more and more stickers to allow you to fill in gaps where previously you just had to deal with it or paint it on your own. It's really good. You also get uh, obscure suits that aren't really uh, involved in anime. There's a lot of Gundam games and pachinko parlors and game arcades. And uh, you don't actually see these suits in anime, but Bandai still goes ahead and, and will make HG versions of these kits. So here's a the Extreme Gundam, and uh, he's got a guitar here. This is why he's Extreme, baby. Oh, he has a guitar? Yeah, Extreme. Here's the Extreme Gundam. <laughs> when Bandai put us up, this out, uh, they were using the uh, effect parts for some details. And it's, it's quite a That's actually departure. awesome. Yeah, it, yeah, it's pretty fun in the game. I've played the game in the arcades. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it comes with that gimmick guitar, which I think is pretty awesome. And uh, you'll start to see uh, more game-related or, you know, non-anime-related Gundam kits as HG kits well before you see them, if you see them as Mastery kits. Uh, I also want to point out that uh, you, they are also bringing out fan favorites. The uh, MG G Gundam, the GOG Gundam, it's one of the best-selling MGs out there, but it was uh, it's older and it doesn't tend to be produced as much, the restocks. But Bandai, they created a whole new line called the High Grade Future Century and they put out this uh, G Gundam and, you know, it's great. It comes with uh, everything you expect. The uh, articulation is on par with what you'd see in a Master Grade with, of course, these loose limbs. And this has got to be one of my favorite uh, HG kits here. And it's also like really small, so it's only maybe 1,200 yen, if I recall correctly. But that's not to say that every HG kit is like small, you know, you're not going to get this tiny thing. They have also, Bandai, used the HG line to produce kits that they would never be able to create as a master grade or perfect grade. And the, and the example that everybody talks about is the Kshatriya. Mm. Now, if you look at this box, this is a perfect grade size, or a master grade size box. It's huge. And it's a master grade price that, you know, Bandai asked about 4,500 yen for it. But uh, you look at what you get and uh, normal, a normal HG, you know, I just showed the uh, age effects. You get what, three runners with the, uh, with the Kshatriya, you're looking at, you know, runner upon runner upon runner. And most notably these monstrous pieces, which are bigger than this kit <laughs> onto its own. So Bandai does use the HG line to put out suits that they would never be able to do in any other format. And it's so, also a good test bed for them. Can I ask you, sorry, so HG kits are not a particularly about the size? No, not about the size. No? It's just about, uh, they're, they're all 1, 144 scale, which pushes them down in size, which okay. makes them smaller and cheaper. But uh, because they, they have the smaller size, they're able to make bit the bigger, bigger suits without, uh, without okay. you, making something that's enormously heavy or expensive. Like if you were to make this as a master grade, Bandai talked about it once at a convention, somebody asked them, are you gonna see this as a master grade? And they said, well, we tried, but the prototype was so heavy, everything oh, just kept falling huge. over. Yeah, it was oh, enormous. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so these are all 144 scale? These are all 144 oh. scale, even this guy. We haven't shown this guy on the show before. Oh. <laughs> this is a psycho Gundam. This guy's monstrous as well. 5,000 yen is usually what uh, Bandai dubs as its selling price. And you look at the size of its leg armor, right? You're not getting any uh, uh, frame like you would in a Master Grade, which is just an HG, but it's just, it's enormous. This one even comes with screws because it's so big, which is like perfect grade territory, right? Like, look at that, it's monstrous. But for fans of the Psycho Gundam, you know, you don't want to get, uh, you know, if you want it, sorry, if you want it, Bandai gives you the option to get it. Mm -hmm. It's not one one forty four scale. If you if you want to do master grade version of this, then you know you bring out the wallet because there's until Bandai <laughs> finance their uh, engineering because it's going to be really really expensive. And uh, one other thing I really like about high grades is because of the design, as we mentioned, incorporates that polycap, often the same polycap. You actually can mess around and you can do some kit bashing. So what I've got here is I've actually got the uh, the Zaku from the Gundam Builders, the super custom Zaku. And uh, this kit's actually pretty cool because when you take off what you need from the runners, you're still left with all these parts that originally are meant for just the normal Zaku. So technically, if I wanted to, even though I built myself the super Zaku, here he is, this is the super Zaku. 
if I wanted to, I've got all the parts I need. Sorry, I put them all right here. To actually build it as a normal Zaku. I can alternate, I can go back and forth. It's pretty oh. cool. I can like kit bash just, just with the parts that were extra on the runners from Bandai. But uh, I'm putting this aside because I've actually got another one of my uh, favorite kits here, which is the Goof Custom. Now the Goof Custom uh, HG is only a couple of years old now. And it is very, very, very good. This, this, the scale is good, the articulation is good. But best of all, it comes with that monstrous shield slash Gatling gun Whoa. that makes the Goof Custom famous. And of course his rifle and whatever else. But I've got these two side by side because I wanted to show how you can basically kit bash these guys. So I'm going to, I'll pop off a leg, pop this off because it's just in the way. If I want to, I can just start swapping parts. Maybe I want, uh, maybe I want my goof to look uh, more menacing in, in the legs, right? Maybe I want a little bit of that action. So he's a cross dresser. Maybe he's a cross dresser. That's not what I said. <laughs> Where do you get these things, Ryan? Where do you, where do you come up with these I don't know, my mind things? is in the gutter. What are you doing, bro? I get out the shield, the shield, the extra part, which I think is cool. Can I use it? I love those knees. Oh, let's drop this guy on here, because I think it's cool. Yeah, the knees are pretty cool. I'm not too sure of the, uh, the, the, the breast bra pointy <laughs> things that you see in uh, clubs. He does those old like clubs. <laughs> yeah. This even guy, even in his backpack, even features arms that uh, hold weapons, which is pretty cool. But we're gonna we're gonna customize the goof a little bit here. Actually, what should we do? We'll pull this part off. Pull this part off. Of course, if you're really adventurous, you can get kits that are not related at all and still uh, manipulate some plastic and come away with your own unique kit bashing here. But this is just an example here. So here's my. Super Zaku goof. And <laughs> with my extra parts, I could always just, just put this guy back together with the goof legs. But what I want to do, because I think it looks cooler, is actually take off the shield if I can. Come on, bro. I actually t had taken this off at one point and actually managed to do this. Yeah, there we oh. go. There we go. There he is. So for those people looking to uh, get into like the modding, the custom building, the um, kit bashing as they call it, mm -hmm. a couple, couple similar HGs is all you need. And you can uh, mess around, you can do, it's easy to do putty work on these kind of things. You don't have to worry about an internal frame. If you want to putty and glue, you can putty and glue. So having said all this about uh, HG, the one question that people have asked me quite often is, you know, what's your favorite HG? And, uh, well, I, my favorite previously was the G Gundam. Just because I thought he looked so great. He was easy to play with. He's easy to customize. Uh, he comes with the extra parts for, you know, his god hand and whatever else. So I thought, you know, this, this kid is great. And then Bandai came out with the uh, Shinanju. And in particular, the titanium finish Shinanju. Yeah, this, this is amazing. Yeah. The color on this kid is... Yeah, it's it's awesome. So, uh, just uh, as a normal HG, it was a great kit. And then Ben, I put it out with the titanium finish version here, and uh, you know it's five thousand yen, and asking price, which is pretty steep. But then again, the uh, master grade version with the titanium, I think it's like twelve thousand or something. It's it's expensive, but you get all, of course not only the the monster Shinanju here, but you also they also give you everything you would get with the. Uh, with the um, master grade, you get the, the rifle, lots of detail on there, the shield, the axe handles, and then the beam parts, beam sabers, handles, and even extra hands, which is something that the master grade Shinanji doesn't even offer. So in some instances, HG is more bang for your buck than an MG is, providing you use everything that they give you. So uh, yeah, HG baby. Okay, Ryan, this wraps up my little uh, overview of uh, the HG, the high grade line. What do you think? Are you more educated now? I am. Very informative, Sid. Yes. Um, just, we're going to do a series of these. Yeah, we'll do a series. Yeah. We'll talk about the master grade, the no grade, the perfect grade, whatever else we can find. I, uh, I should mention that, uh, you know, the, the HG line is so big. It's so expansive. There's yeah. hundreds of kits that I have only touched on a fraction of them. 
you know I've built more mastery kits than anything else so uh, there's probably a lot of uh, models that I can be recommending but I no, not because I haven't built them mm. yet so I actually want to know from the viewers out there like what's your favorite high grade kit yeah what's the one that you would recommend to somebody who's never built a Gundam before or is asking what a good high grade kit is yeah. only high grade just high grades. We'll get to the other one series <laughs> soon. So, uh, what's your favorite or most recommended high grade kit? Leave a comment on uh, Facebook, YouTube, I'll and everywhere else. We ask for that stuff. Hobbling TV, and uh, we will do a little unscientific poll of the results. Yeah, and uh, we'll talk about those in the future episodes. Sweet. Okay, Ryan. Comments. Speaking of comments from the viewers, I think we have time. I have a few. Yes, we do. Let me uh, get started mm -hmm. with uh, Lucky. Loki man. Loki man. SK. SK is that SK is like Saskatchewan? I'm just thinking. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Hey Sid and Ryan. I I have this maybe two personal question for you. Uh oh. Personal questions. Uh, but can you tell us which perfect and or master grade model is the best overall seller in the HLJ store? Do you make these kind of statistics? I'm really interested to know what is the most popular kit in such a big store like HLJ. Thanks in advance, smiley face. That's actually a pretty good question. Is. I don't have access to all that data because I don't uh, run the systems and I'm only in one department in this building. But uh, whenever I see um, you know, kits usually going out of stock quickly, mm. turnarounds very quick, it's usually mm -hmm. like the uh, Mass Rate Shinanju is very, 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 oh, very, yeah. very popular. It usually goes out almost immediately. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's uh, some of the new masquerades. As soon as there's a new masquerade, there's a big boom, and you know everybody wants that one. But there's some that are really consistent. You know, the RX 782, oh, the animation yeah. color version, is also very popular, and it's not one that Bandai's producing as much of, so it tends not to hang around. Perfect grade, I would say, is probably two. Mm -hmm. The uh, perfect grade Red Astray, yeah, which we gave away as prize after mm -hmm. 100 and the Strike. Oh yeah, both the those strike. ones tend to not hang around very often. Yeah, so. That's the, those are the, probably the top sellers when it comes to Master Grade and Perfect Grade kits. And it's hard to tell, I mean, over a period of time, yeah. uh, what sells the most because yeah. it just depends. Mm -hmm. And next is from Freddie Clark. I think Freddie's a regular, maybe. I recognize that name. Yeah. Hey, Sid and Ryan, I started to watch some of the early videos of Gunpla TV. Oh, how embarrassing. Yeah. The good old days. <laughs> I'm so When nervous. we're young and free, <laughs> the hair just blowing through our hair. And there was a question asked about if you would build or buy a fake copied or non-Bandai mm. kits. Do you remember that? I remember that. I do remember that. So my question is, for those who don't want to get screwed over from buying a fake kit, is there anything we should be looking for when buying Gunpla from our local Gunpla store? Although I have no problem ordering from HLJ. Well, you know, HLJ keeps the show going. <laughs> but I would like to support and keep my local Gunpla store alive. To keep us alive as well. Maybe Thanks, they, guys, maybe for the shop at HLJ. Yeah. Uh, other than, uh, like, you're not going to be able to tell when you look at the runners because they're basically just molded from the runners already in the existing kit. So uh, you're only, your best bet is to look at the box. And, uh, I mean, you have these, the Bandai logo, and then you'll occasionally have these kind of things. Satsu Sunrise right here is actually uh, the, the copyright holder for this stuff. Oh, okay. But uh, you have to look at the back here, and you'll see Bandai's name and address in Japanese. Followed by the barcode and uh, right up here at the very top above the barcode is another sequence of numbers mm -hmm. And there's four digits at the very end here. This four digit code is actually the recommended sale price from Bandai oh, okay. So if people are completely copying the box for their bootlegged figures Well, you know, you're not gonna have much chance to pick this up But if you actually take a look at the box and you see this relevant Bandai only information You, you probably can use that to determine whether it's an actual Bandai kit or not. Absolutely. And uh, the same goes for Kotobuki. They have the same kind of stamp okay. on their boxes as well. <laughs> I'm learning a lot today. Yeah. What's going on? Thank you, Shitane. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what we're here for. We're but educated. also, I think you could just tell by the quality of the box or the plastic if you could yeah. take a look inside. But yeah, yeah, that's a really good tip. There you go. Thank you, Sid. No problem. <laughs> Uh, and that's it. Okay. That one was Ozoid Kit Snap Fit or Blue, and we yep. still think we mentioned Snap Fit. Yeah, so. they are Snap Fit. I mean, you can get in there. Sometimes you might need a little touch of glue, depending on how the part is designed, because there's a lot of really tiny parts on uh, Zoid's kits. But uh, they're designed to be Snap Fit out of the box. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you have any more questions, just uh, lay it yeah, on us. Let us know. We'll do our best to answer. On our blog. Yes. On YouTube. 
Facebook. Facebook, and we always put uh, oh, nice photos when we get the opportunity to. Yeah. And I've also noticed on Hobbylink TV on our Facebook page, a lot of people are posting, posting on our wall stuff they're building and mm -hmm. really cool stuff. So please. Yeah, I saw some good stuff. On yeah, there. yeah. Yeah. Share. That's right. It's all about community. Yeah, sharing is caring. All right. Okay, and before you get all weepy on us here. <laughs> Just he, emotion. He just had a kid, so he's like, I feel so connected with the world around me. I feel like a man. <laughs> grown. <laughs> Life is fresh. Fresh. You'll get over that like within a year. All right. Thanks. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry to burst your bubble. Yeah. You'll be back to your grudge yourself. All right. So let's end right here before yes. you get all embarrassed. <laughs> See ya. Peace.